Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, as promised, I put the uh, 7580 fan dipole experiment back up to uh, answer uh, one big question a lot of people asked or proposed as a possible issue. Um, and uh, I wanted to do that uh, final test with it to, you know, see if, uh, if that was actually an issue or not. And further trim it, tune it, and then experiment with it a bit more just to see if it is a viable antenna option. Now to refresh your memory, a little while back um, I had an idea inspired by a fellow hams experiments. Uh, Jim, AC9EZ up in Fort Wayne, had two inverted L's, both for uh, cut for 80 meters. Well, 80 and 75. One was cut for the low end, um, where he liked to operate CW. The other was cut for the high end, where he liked to operate single sideband. I guess he had room to put them both up. But he joined them together with a Y and uh, used them together to provide broad coverage across the entire uh, band from 3.5 up to 4 megahertz. And uh, I thought, well, can you make a fan dipole using something like ladder line, um, since it's all, you know, it's already joined up in parallel, uh, and would it work? You know, could you cut one leg for 80 meters, one leg for 75, and get good coverage across the entire band with a single uh, antenna? That was, the, uh, that was the concept, that was the experiment. And it didn't really work all that well. I had it up on Al's tower uh, when I was down in Rockport, uh, and uh, yeah, results were mixed. So I put it back up here uh, to, as I promised, you know, I, I promised I was going to put it up and finish this experiment. Uh, out here in the desert, though, I didn't have a tower. Um, I didn't have a lot of options, really. So I used my MFJ mast, and I was a little concerned about damaging the mast due to the weight of this antenna and the potential for wind loading if it got windy. I had to wait for a calm day because it's quite a, quite a big antenna. You know, it's a half wave at... Uh, 80 meters, so that's 126 feet or so. Um, so I put it up uh, halfway up on the MFJ mast, as you can see here, uh, and then I had to carefully draw the legs up without putting too much force on the mast. So I'd bring them up a little at each time, go back and forth until I got it up far enough. It's still not very far up off the ground, which is an issue. You know, it, it, ideally, uh, an 80 meter dipole would be at least a quarter of a wavelength off the ground, and this is really close to the ground. However, the soil here is mostly sand and volcanic pumice with various other minerals, so I, I hope that it wouldn't affect things all that much. Uh, the legs were supported with some PVC pipe and stakes in the ground, and I was able to draw it up to get it up off the ground a little ways without putting too much pressure on the mast. Now, the question that people had proposed was the ends. Um, what I had done uh, on the ends of the antenna to create the short leg was I cut one of the wires, but I left the segment that I cut off hanging there. And multiple people said, well, you've got capacitive loading on the end of the antenna. That's going to affect things with that remaining segment. And I thought about that for a while. Uh, could it really? You know, because if you look here, I, I drew this up. So this is what we're talking about. We have the ladder line cut uh, to make the short leg, but that segment that we cut off is still there. And anytime you have two pieces of metal close to each other or two wires close to each other, you have some capacitance between them. That's how crosstalk happens in, in cables and uh, on PC board traces. So, yeah, sure, it does form a capacitor, but electrically, thinking about it, what we have is a signal source and a capacitor that's not connected to anything. There's no current path. It's floating. So it, it could potentially loosely couple to the ground below it, I suppose, and maybe make a bit of a difference, but I couldn't imagine that it would make that big of a difference. So what my main goal today was was to cut those segments off and sweep the antenna and see how much of a difference it did make. And then uh, I was going to trim and tune it uh, better to, to cover the band the way I wanted it to and, and see how it actually did behave on the band. 
So the first thing I did was I cut off those remaining segments, as you can see here. Uh, to hold the uh, end of the, the remaining long leg up, I tied my paracord to one of the remaining window line segments and then just taped the end of the cord or the end of the wire up onto the cord to keep it straight so that I had a nice straight antenna. Uh, and then we went in and we scanned it. Now, here is a scan of the antenna before I cut off the ends. Okay, so this is before that segment was gone. Um, and then here is a scan after I cut off the ends. And everything shifted down slightly. So there was something going on with those capacitive ends, uh, with capacitance from those remaining ends. Not dramatic, not huge, but there definitely was an effect. Let's look at these side by side, or one above and below. And you can see that it did shift very slightly down. Um, but not a lot. So that answers that question. Yes, those remaining segments did provide some capacitive loading, but not a lot. But yeah, it did make a difference. So there you go. That answers that question. Now, um, to further look at the antenna, I tuned it. I trimmed it down to tune it better, where I got the long leg around 3.6 megahertz and I got the short leg up around 3.8 megahertz. And here is a scan um, after I trimmed it. So this is more like what I wanted as far as the position that I wanted each of the legs to be. But as you can see, the SWR between those segments shoots right up. And up at the uh, high end of the band, it really goes up when we don't have that much of a dip um, where the short leg is. And that's probably due to capacitive effect between the two legs, since they're so close together with the window line. Uh, so, yeah, that's not really providing what I'd hoped it would provide in concept. So it's not looking good. Um, I uh, did some additional scans on the other bands. Now, usually with an 80 meter dipole, you're going to have some usability on the harmonic frequencies. Uh, Although, in this case, the SWR was quite high. Here's 40 meters and well over 3 to 1 SWR. Uh, probably not going to be within the range of the ICOM's built-in tuner. Uh, you could probably tune it with a broader tuner like the LDG or one of the MFJ tuners. Uh, but it's not as close as it would be if it was just a regular 80 meter dipole. Uh, 20 meters, again, not good. Um, what else did I look at? Uh, I, I looked at 160 meters, and weirdly, I saw a dip right down below the band. So that's interesting. Uh, I didn't, wouldn't expect it to be very efficient. You can tune an 80 meter dipole on 160 with a broadband antenna tuner, but it's not going to radiate very well. Uh, I've seen lots of people try that in the past, and they just don't get out very well. Uh, I did do a radio test though. Uh, let's take a look at that. So I've got the antenna hooked up to the radio now. Um, just a little bit ago I was talking to these guys on uh, They're encapsulated in a glass 75 meters. Well, you know, like a glass pipette, That's you know, Steve. A glass He's about an S9 here the and he gave me a similar report. He said I was about an S8. Um, He's not too far away. He's in a city about uh, well, within 200 miles, I think. But he heard me just fine at 20 watts. He said I was about an S8 at 20 watts. So it definitely works on uh, 75 and 80 meters. I did an SWR sweep with the ICOM, too, just to see what the radio thought of it. And I captured that screen for you here. But as we saw from the... Um, the uh, VNA scans of the other bands, uh, it's way, way, way off on the other bands, um, the harmonic bands. You know, if you, t if you have a regular 80 meter dipole, uh, you generally can tune it pretty well on 40 and 20 for sure, sometimes 30 and, and 15 because it's close on the harmonics. This was not, and it's probably the capacitive effect between the two legs because they're so close together that's causing that. Uh, if I go to uh, 40 meters, the ICOM's built-in tuner gives up. It doesn't even want to try. 
<laughs> I could probably tune it with the LDG tuner, but it's so far off that it wouldn't be efficient. And we see the same thing on pretty much the other bands here. Here's 30. Yeah, and again, the tuner gives up uh, 20. The tuner does dial it in on 20. Now, I don't know how well it would work. It probably would. It's got a lot of capture area. Let's go up and see if we can hear the Maritime Mobile Net. Yeah, yeah, we can't even tune up here. <laughs> the SWR is so high up at this area that, uh, that it's just not, just not going to work. So it did work as an 80 meter antenna, 75, 80 meter antenna, uh, up at the high end of the band. I did have to tweak it with the ICOM's built-in tuner, um, but it just was not usable on any of the other bands. So yeah, it's, it's really not a practical idea. Uh, it was a concept, it was an experiment, and the experiment showed that this is just not a workable concept. Um, probably would be better off just making it into a folded dipole joining the uh, the ends together putting a four to one um, at the feed point like i did with the 40 meter folded dipole using window line and that worked really really well that 40 meter folded dipole using window line is great i've still got it I, i'll probably put it up occasionally to use it because it it worked great this would probably work on 75 or 80 meters as a folded dipole but it's not going to be as broad as i wanted in the concept um, folded dipole with the 40 meter uh, version, I saw a bandwidth um, uh, pretty broad, around 300 and some kilohertz, uh, and it was it was quite good. Uh, on this, it probably wouldn't be wide enough still to use the entire band, but that's a possibility. I might try that in the future. I don't know. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut this uh, antenna down and salvage the window line and use it as feed line in future antenna experiments. Or, you know, I've kind of got in the back of my mind maybe trying to make a 20-meter J-pole just to see how well it would work. <laughs> um, it should be doable with uh, one of those lengths of, of, la of line because the J-pole has to be at least a half a wavelength, uh, which would be, um, or is it a full wave? I think it's a full wave. Yeah, a J-pole has to be a full wave, doesn't it? So it would, it would be... Uh, I think I could take one of those legs and make a J-pole out of it. I might do that in the future. That's that's bouncing around in the back of my head. But as far as the fan dipole experiment goes, I'm closing the door on it. Um, I'm not calling it a complete fail because we learned something. You know, we, we tried it and saw that it did not work as I'd hoped. But, you know, that's okay. Um, it was fun to do. It was a bit of work. <laughs> but... Uh, but, uh, you know, it was, it was fun. I like to play around with ideas just to see if they work, rather than just relying totally on theory. Anyway, um, that's it for this one. Uh, what am I going to do next? You know, I forgot that I had something that a lot of people want to see, and, and I'm going to get into that. I, I forgot that I had the, the uh, Chameleon Antenna's power compensator for their magnetic loop, and somebody uh, recently bumped on the other video and said, hey, uh, you're going to do that power compensator video. So... Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to get the uh, chameleon loop out, get that power compensator, which seems like snake oil, out and uh, see what it does. Maybe we'll even try to take it apart and see what's inside. I don't think anybody's done that in a video yet. So that's it for this one. We'll see you in the next video. 73. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.